Business Bully Podcast is being brought to you by Audible. With over 180,000 titles to choose from, you can truly educate yourself without ever leaving the comfort of wherever the heck you are. AudibleTrial.com forward slash bully. Ladies and gentlemen, it is bully time. Let's get the show started. He's been an award-winning media personality and producer. As a speaker, he's empowered over one million people from the stage. Now, one of the leading brand experts and business coaches in the U.S. is bringing his unique brand of straight talk to the world of on-demand audio. It's the Business Bully Podcast. Now, here's the business bully himself, David Anderson. Yes, yes, I am very happy to be here, yes, welcome to the Business Bully Podcast, I am Dave Anderson, it is so nice to hear you, yes it is, and, and by you I mean me, no, in all seriousness man, I'm, um, I'm extremely excited, I'm very happy, life is good, I'm feeling, uh, emotionally speaking anyway, very good, uh, thanks to everybody who has been uh, following me and supporting me. Um, With this business bully movement, it means a whole lot because we are changing lives and making things happen. So that's always a good thing. One thing that I'm extremely thrilled about is being able to talk to you and being able to uh, bring what it is that I do um, to you and hopefully inspire you to do some great things. I was talking to uh, one of my former clients who decided after experiencing um, some difficulties that she wanted to just go on and make it happen. And what basically went on was she had uh, a guy that she had met who was doing um, men's products, you know, beard, uh, beard oil, beard butter, beard wash, all this sort of kind of stuff. And she wanted to partner with him and sell his stuff and do some cross promotion. I'm always about partnerships, especially if the partnership makes sense. I don't have to like you, I don't have to love you, but if you have an audience and that audience lines up with what I want to have happen, I'm going to go for it. So this was the case with her. So then she's talking to this beard guy and all of a sudden he starts hemming and hawing and bitching and moaning. And um, She said, literally, my inner David Anderson went off and said, you know what, it's cool, no problem. The next thing you know, she calls one of her partners and is like, yo, we're going to get in the beard, uh, we're going to get in the men's grooming business. And he was like, but we had somebody who, you know, was going to do that. What happened? And she explained to him what had happened. And, and he was like, well, I don't know. I might, I don't want to step on any toes, so on and so forth. And she was like, damn that. He didn't want to get down, so we about to lay him down. In other words, when somebody decides that they want to hem and haw, see, you don't want to deal with squealing ass partners. You don't want to deal with, um, you know, joint ventures with people who do not have the the gonads or the brass balls in order to make things happen. And so um, they are launching their, their their whole line. They're sending me some samples, so it's it's really cool um, to see that. And I get really inspired when people say, "Hey, I heard you, you know, in my head saying, damn them.' You know, if they don't want to if they don't want to get down and they're the enemy, destroy them at all costs. Be legal and ethical, but destroy them at all costs." That's what I'm into. That's why I do this. And that's what makes me happy, damn it. That's all. Yes! Enough of that. All right, so let me do some more due diligence while I told you that little anecdote. Um, The Business Bully Podcast is being brought to you by Barry Amazing Travel. Make sure you check them out at BarryAmazingTravel.com. Don't worry about your hotel. Don't worry about your airfare. You can go to exotic places and make sure that you're just putting away a little bit of money at a time and just paying that sucker off. That's right. And you get everything. I mean, quality service. They are the official travel agency of the Business Bully Podcast. So make sure you check them out. Barry like in strawberry, raspberry, blueberry, boys and Barry, Barry Amazing Travel.com. And in addition, oh yeah, you want to make sure you get some sexy stuff for your thickums. Kelly's Closet.net has everything you need, and that's Closet with a K. And don't forget Kelly's Toy Box. And of course, you get 15% off by using the code Business Bully or Bully. 15% off on your entire order by using Business Bully or or bully and last but certainly not least polish and lather if you want to know how my skin is so awesomely supple and sexy it's because of the products that polish and lather including the limited edition business bully soap which will be on sale this july so make sure you check out my sponsors damn it support my sponsors 
Damn it. Because <laughs> let me tell you something. I got kids and they're addicted to air conditioning and indoor plumbing. You feel me? Yes, you do. All right. So, without any further ado, um, the individual that I have for you tonight is uh, somebody who I greatly respect. Because one day I get an email. And the email says, hey, Dave, you know, I'm kind of looking for a coach. I want to do X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, all right, cool. You know? Um, and then... You know, she's like, well, you know, I'm going to think about it. I'll holler at you, this, that, and the third. The next thing I know, she's everywhere. And, I mean, she literally just coached herself into success. And when you see somebody who just says, you know what? I'm good. I can do this. If it's going to be, it's up to me. Man, oh, man, that's somebody you got to put your money on. You just got to double down on that. And so I have for you right now the owner and CEO of Ready for Spanish and the launch coach, uh, Lishonda Fitzgerald is in the building. What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? Yay! Thank you. What an amazing introduction. You know, I try to do what I can. I, I want to bring you on. You know what I mean? I got to bring you on. <laughs> yeah. Well, you brought it. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Absolutely. So, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I am owner of Ready for Spanish, which is a language school for kids. And I started this business six years ago um, after being laid off as a public school teacher. I was nine months pregnant, single mom, having my second child. I just bought my home. And I said to myself, I want to be a stay-at-home mom. Like, I'm going to find a way to be a stay-at-home mom. Like, nothing was more important to me. So everybody laughed. Like, every single person I knew laughed at me. They're like, there's no way you're going to be able to do this. Wow. So that was my why. Like my why was I wanted to stay home with my kids. I didn't want to work all day, send my kids to daycare, you know, struggle to pay for it, then come home just to be too tired um, to spend any quality time with them. I was like, I'm going to find a way that I can stay home with my kids. And from there, that birthed my business. Um, So I started a business with really no business skills, Um, Just using my passion, my experience, my training, because I I went to college, I lived abroad, I I taught Spanish, you know, for some years. So I I knew that I could do it on my own. Like, I'm a teacher. Like, I'm I'm doing it in a school district. I knew that I could monetize my gift. So I started this business. I just, I went for it, and the business is successful. Six years later, um, me just following my dream, just like doing what I wanted to do, which was stay home with my kids, has just really paid off for me. So here I am, six years later, so many opportunities just for taking action six years ago when I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. Wow, that is utterly amazing. I'm so proud of you. That's awesome. It really is. (laughs) Thank you so much. Hey, man. Now, let me ask you this, right? You you have this business. Um, do you have like? Uh, are you Hispanic? I am not. I am not Hispanic. I learned, I took my first Spanish class when I was in seventh grade. Ah, vamos a la biblioteca. <laughs> <laughs> Donde está el baño? Right, oh. that's what everybody can say. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I took my first Spanish class in seventh grade. I was pretty good at it in high school. Um, I went to college to be a doctor, but, you know, terrible at science. So I just, I stuck with it. Like Spanish was easy for me. I got an opportunity to study abroad when I was in college. Um, they were looking for Spanish teachers when I graduated. It was, it was like the path was just laid out for me. Man. And and it's such a funny thing. Like I know, you know, there are plenty of black women who are learning other languages that have nothing Mm -hmm. to do with their culture and they just rocking and rolling with it. Like my cousin Kina, she's over in Japan right now teaching English as a second language to Japanese businessmen and making a fortune. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to take my butt over there to Osaka and get some of that Japanese uh, businessman money, you know, <laughs> but, right. um, you know, it, it just amazes me how sisters are, are literally just, you know, making it happen, you know, when it comes to things like that, like, it, it's just, it, it blows my mind, and you know what I'm saying, like, I, I can I can give you the hook to Macarena, like, mm-hmm. my Macarena is dope, I'm just letting you know, but... 
I can't like when I was in high school, like I literally was dope at Spanish. Like I could, I could listen, I could speak it. I can't write it word for damn and don't want to. I'm not here to conjugate no damn Spanish verbs, you know. Right. But um, I can always viernes. Si pero rupido, dale tu cuerpo para la crida macarena, que tu cuerpo es para dar crida cosa buena. Eh, macarena, bye, man. And you know what I'm saying? Like I got it. Like. You know, I, I I literally just gave y'all like a Chris Tucker. Like half of that wasn't even Spanish. I just want to let y'all know for those of y'all who are impressed right now. <laughs> half of that was some bullshit. <laughs> but, you know, how did you flip that into a business that would be viable for children? Um, So really, I went to an HBCU. I'm I'm down for the cause. Like if if people don't know. And I started this business because I looked at some of this the disparities for for black children, for our children. And I said, you know, really languages are, are what can close that gap. So if you know a second language, like for me, it completely changed my life. Like, even though it's not an African language or whatever, but just knowing a second language here in the United States just opens up so many opportunities for you, whether you go to college or not. And really, um, Studies show that regardless of your economic place as an African-American, you aren't afforded the same opportunities to study and master a second language. Yeah, and if you're so, black, you're not given those opportunities either. It, it, yeah, well, if you're black, but it doesn't matter if you're, if you're middle class, if you're upper middle class, if you're wealthy, you're just not afforded the same opportunities. So even if you're in the best private schools, like black kids aren't pushed to take AP Spanish, they just... They just aren't. So unless you have a family or come from a, back, from a background um, that's really supportive of that, as a culture, we just don't, as a community, we don't have the same opportunities. So I said, you know, I'm Black. It was important for me um, that, A, somebody can see somebody that looks like you that that's doing it. Because when I taught high school, the kids would be like, no, you have to be Puerto Rican or no, where are you from? And I'm like, no, I'm from North Nashville. Right. So I can do it. You can, <laughs> you can do it. I can do what you can do it. Um, so that was just really important for me. And then I started in seventh grade. But what if I had an opportunity when I was, you know, five or I start teaching kids from birth? Like, how amazing is that? I have five and six year olds that are already fluent. So when they do get an opportunity in school, they can start on their third language, right? Wow. See. So that was that was just really the goal for me. So whether you fix cars or you fix hair, like that's a whole nother just revenue, people you can market to. There's just so many opportunities for you when you can do that. So I, you know, had a dream and I I went for it. It was crazy. But, you know, the crazier, the better. You know what I want to do? And I think this is a really good business idea, but you tell me what you think. You're the language expert, right? Okay. I want to actually learn fluent Korean, right? Then I want to have like three or four people who work for me. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to nail salons because black women won't support black women who own nail salons, but black women will go to Koreans who support nail salons. And then I want to be paid to, to just be like an undercover type of situation where I tell you when the Koreans are talking shit about you while you get your pedicure. <laughs> nah, 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 mm, nah. Not so much. Look, every idea can't be a bestseller, damn it. I'm just saying, I, I thought it's a good idea. Like, I feel like that would be a service y'all would pay for. I mean, y'all pay to put Indian women in your head. Not all of y'all, but some of y'all. So I just figured that that would be cool because y'all know they'd be sitting up here, oh, your feet are so pretty. Y'all feet are so pretty. And you know, good and well, they don't think your feet are pretty. You know they don't. You know they, they think that you look, you looking like you, you, you know, kicked rocks 15 times barefoot with flip-flops on. And why them flip-flops so cheap they give y'all when y'all get pedicures? See? <laughs> I don't know. I can't stand them flip flops. But y'all still wear them. We'll wear them. They broke by the time I get to the car. I don't know why y'all just don't bring in your own flip flops. <laughs> like, why is it so hard? Look, there's another idea. Flip flop rental. Boom. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm gonna stick to what I know. <laughs> 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 so let, let's let's talk. Let's, let's switch gears for a second, because don't get okay. me wrong. Uh, Spanish is important, but. Uh, you know, I say Frio out here. It's cold in these streets. Right. And, um, see, see, you didn't think I remember that. Look at you. Aha. Uh -huh. Rosetta Stone, bitches. No. Um, what is it when you deal with people 
as a launch coach. Um, why do people fail to launch? Like, what is going on with uh, the psychology of people that, you know, want to be their own boss, want to start their own courses, want to, you know, build their businesses on your end of things when it comes to launching, you know, um, projects, you know, um, courses, um, campaigns, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Where, where, where do the people that you run into seem to fail, in your opinion? Um. I really think a lot of people are not clear on what their solution is. So you kind of have to start there. Like, what is my solution? Who am I serving? And and a lot of people really aren't clear to that. So if you if you don't know that, like if you don't know that answer, then you don't know what problem you're solving. So you don't know how to approach the problem. Like, does that make sense to you? So, like, you can't launch something. Um. And, and you really don't know what you're launching. So like, it's, you kind of have to take a step back. Like, what is my, what is my solution? And then how can I package it? And then how can I leverage my time? Right. So I think with a lot of entrepreneurs, they get caught in the hustle. And for me, I've made the transition from hustle to freedom. So like, I don't want to grind hard. I don't want to, you know, work 24 hours a day. I want to sleep and I want to spend time with my family. Like spending time with my family has always been my why. And I think just throughout the course of my business, uh, some of the challenges, that's what kept me going. It's, It's not how can I work so I can always work. It's like, how can I find a solution to this freedom? Like, how can I leverage my time, my skills? And, and package this in a way that I can enjoy my family. Mm, that's important. That, yeah, that's important. So when I create a, a product, when I create a service, when even for my business, when I create a class, it's how does this best maximize my time? Um, how does this, you know, is this going to generate revenue for me? Like, what problem is this going to solve? Like, these are the the things that you want to think about before you even decide to launch. And then you have to think about a strategy. So when we talk about launching, like, um, a launch always starts way before the launch. So, like, if, I, if I'm going to launch a new product or a new service on, on June 1st, like everything behind the scenes, the research, uh, that should have been happening way before the launch. The marketing, the the relationships that I'm that I'm building. Uh-huh. So like, uh, a lot of people fail. I'll tell you a story. Uh-huh. So, in my Spanish business, I just thought that I was gonna work a little bit to get me through. Um, with my son, but my business took off. Like I've literally taught Spanish to every child in Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm one person, like I didn't have any business background, hiring people. That was a a fail for me for a while. Um, So I was looking for a way to just kind of clone myself, like to, to duplicate myself because I needed relief. Like for a while, my business was doing so well, but I was working just way too hard. And and you will get burnt out. So I was just looking for relief. So I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this product. I felt like it was just a waste for people to come to me and pay me to teach their kids how to count to 10. You know, like the basic stuff, like there's some stuff you could do and know your own before you come to me. So I decided I was going to create this product which which is still on Amazon. Like now I I listen to it, like I cringe when I listen to it, but I keep it there to assess my growth. So I have this Spanish CD. It's called Ready for Spanish Presents Ready for Radio. And it's the basics. So it's basic Spanish that you need to know, the foundation before you come to me. So I was so excited. It took me, you know, almost a year to create this this product. And then I launched it to crickets, right? Like, literally nobody bought my first digital product. Now, this is this is six years ago. So, five years ago. So, I've learned so much between now and then. So, people will create this amazing product that people, that people need, but then they kind of launch it quietly. Like, they don't build any buzz about it. They don't uh, build any relationships. I mean, I did have clients, and those were pretty much the only people who bought it. 
Um, yeah, that's that's not how that's supposed <laughs> to. Yes, yeah, that's not how it's supposed to go. But from that failed launch, you know, I learned some amazing lessons from some of my launches that have gone extremely well. Nice. Um, yeah. Now, I, I know, and, and you always talk about how, you know, it literally takes minutes for you to get somebody to get double what they're charging um, automatically. Mm-hmm. You know, how in the hell can somebody just double their, like, double what they're charging? Like, double your revenue? Yeah. You want me to give all my good secrets? No, just just give them one. I mean, it's, this is the show. Don't make me bully <laughs> I, it I out mean, of you. It, it, it's, it's so easy. Uh, all you have to do is, is raise your prices. Huh? And... <laughs> that's it like I have clients that I work with all the time and I'm like I can increase your revenue in one conversation because nine times out of ten you're charging too low mm. now how do, you, it, how do you assess that somebody like okay how do you assess that somebody's charging too low like how do you gauge that because you know some people are worried about what the market can bear or what they think people can afford like get into the psychology of how how you do that I mean, this might go completely out the window, but I am so against market research. Like, I'm not saying, like, don't do your research, Mm -hmm. but if you come to me and you're complaining that you're not making enough money, that's how I gauge it. Like, if you're not (laughs) making enough money, then you need to raise your prices. Yeah, research done, huh? (laughs) And and really, that's it. Like, there may be other people and there may be a market, but you're, you're the only person that that can do what you do if you do it well. So, like, for me, I I don't know everything. I'm not the best at everything. But what I do know, which is how to launch and create courses and and market them and create packages and, you know, how to teach Spanish. I do know how to do that. Those things I know how to do, I, I know how to do them well, and people need to pay me to do that. So, like, I'm confident in what I do well. So I charge according to that. And I charge according to um, the freedom lifestyle that I want. So, um, for instance, right now I have a summer camp. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of summer camps in the city that charge $50 a week. Well, guess what? They have to have 100 kids to make what I make during during one week of my camp. Mm -hmm. So, So I don't have to have the quantity because I have the quality. So if I have a $2,500 product, Versus a ten dollar product. Here's the here's the thing. Right. It takes just as much energy to to create and launch a ten dollar product as it does a five thousand dollar product. I'm here to tell you. So I mean, it's exactly the same thing. Now you may have a lower product at some point for a different reason. Right. Like you know, it it isn't always about money all the time. But when it is about money you need you need to raise your prices yeah that's it yeah i mean i know some some people like literally like you just literally took a caveman and said hey blow your nose with a tissue because there's some people in my audience right now like damn like all of a sudden they're just like wow and i say all the time because especially in our community we feel guilty about charging i don't I, I don't either, <laughs> but a lot of, I, I have a lot of clients who feel guilty about charging and I'm like, that's not a, that's not a business issue. Like that's a self worth issue that you kind of need to get to the, to the bottom of. Unless I'm being paid five grand to give a motivational speech, I'm not here for your feelings because, <laughs> and, and, and let me be real. Like, let me be real. I mean, it's my show. I, I can be real. Um, nobody has gone to Chicago. As far as I know, get got past the guards and went right up to Michael Jordan's sprawling estate, knocked on his door and said, excuse me, your airness. Um, the cost of your sneakers are way too high. And it ain't even happened. It's not happening. No one has ever walked into a McDonald's from here to 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 Murfreesboro, Tennessee and said, you know what? A supersized box of fries shouldn't be this much. Can, can we talk about the price? No. Y'all want to... See, I'm going to say it. Forgive me, people who are not black right now, but my black listeners especially, um, if your black asses 
Don't negotiate over a Big Mac. You don't negotiate over no Jordans. You don't negotiate over no Weaves, no Christian Louis Vuittons. I ain't trying to hear you when I launch something. Like, I'm getting ready to drop this Facebook Live book, and it's it's not cheap. It's double the cost of what Pitch Close Up So Repeat is. And it's an ebook. And I don't apologize for none of it. Because none of you raggedy bastards did this work. You know? You, you didn't get, jump in the gym and, and start shooting these free throws. So please don't come tell me about how how my prices are. Let's talk about how low your standards are. Wow. Right. Um, um so I'm sorry. I just sometimes because I ain't taking my medicine. Like, I just it just bothers me, man. Like, oh my gosh, we got we got a trillion dollars in buying power. And we buy the dumbest shit. And when somebody you, you complain that there's not nothing there. You know that there's nothing there to help me, and then when the help comes, you start like bad mouthing the help, and I ain't talking Viola Davis. <laughs> you just, like I I don't I don't know how to wake up that mentality, and I'm not here to try to figure that out. They got psychologists who are much better trained at that than I am. But uh, yeah, I I stopped apologizing for my prices. I don't feel guilty. You don't like it? Um, bye. Right. Keep struggling. See how much that costs you. And and there are some people who won't pay your prices. Like you, you may lose some clients. Like I do, you know, know. offer offer strategies with that. But there's a there's a whole market. Like there's a whole world out there. Like you're not you're not limited. So the only limitations that you put on your on your finances on your prices, you control that. Like it's your business. You get to, like you have so much power in your business, and people are are trapped like in their businesses. Like this is, I. I don't know. I've been there, so I, I get it. But it's it's at the end of the day, you are the cause of all things. So whether you're making the money in your business, whether you aren't, it's it's you. Mm. So how? OK, let's say that I am a person who has recently seen the light mm-hmm. and wants to raise their prices and says, I'm, I'm just going to I'm going to take that leap. I'm going to jump and, and I'm going to go ahead and. And I'm going to challenge myself and I'm going to raise my prices. How do they find um, that audience that you speak of? If they've only been selling $10, $15 products or never sold a product at all, and you're telling them they can sell a two, three hundred thousand dollars product, how do they find those people who are willing to buy that? Because it ain't nobody in their timeline. Um, it, it, it's definitely not anybody in your timeline. Um, you, you A, have to create the value of your product. So you have the power to do that. So you create your own value and then you, you attract the market. So it's not like you go out and find them because that's, that's so hard, but there are ways that you can attract those clients who've been looking for exactly what it is that you offer. But that again, goes back to, you have to be clear on what that is. Wow. So like it's it's different. Like how do I find it? How do I find it? Um, you know that that's <laughs> you're gonna work yourself too hard, especially in the beginning. But once you're clear on on who exactly you do serve and what your solution is, then you're gonna create something to attract them. So we're not tricking people. We're not deceiving people. Like I'm, you know, a hundred percent integrity with with everything. But there are strategies that you can use to attract them. So they'll, they're, they're looking for you. Like if you have a solution, people are, people are already looking for it. Okay. So if they're already looking for it, mm-hmm. and I have they just, a solution, they, how do they I just get don't know that you have it, but, but I got it. I, I need to, I need them to find me. Like how right. do they find me? Um, that's, that's really where Brandon comes in. Oh, like you, you, that's 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 where Brandon comes in. That's that's you. That's your thing. So oh. you can't be quiet. Oh. Like people create these 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 amazing products and don't tell anybody. <laughs> like you still have to put yourself out there. Like you you can't do it quietly. Oh, you mean like you have that's, to be bold? that's that's what I did. You have to make an impression. You do. You actually have to go out and campaign and let people know you exist. You got to make some noise. You can't do the same thing that everybody else is doing. You kind of got to, you know, stand out in the marketplace. No. You do. Man, you're talking crazy talk. That's <laughs> never worked for anybody I know. Oh, man, please. How did you get on this I show? I mean, there, 
<laughs> it's it's nothing new. And and it's not. And I learned it the hard way. <laughs> Banging your head, huh? For for simple. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. And, and and it's just it's extremely frustrating for people who just don't um who just don't want to get there because they're afraid of what's on the other side. Uh, LaShonda, hang on one second. I'm going to do a quick commercial break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about um, helping people get to the next level, all right? So after these messages, we're going to rock and roll and do some things. You stand by. You are listening to the Business Bully Podcast because, well, damn it, it's awesome, and that's just what we do. Yeah, baby. He's one of the leading business coaches and branding experts in the U.S., generating millions of dollars for brands like Nutrisystem, The Ricky Smiley Morning Show, iHeart Media, and Les Brown. He's impacted over one million people from the stage. Now, best-selling author David Anderson releases his latest book, Pitch, Close, Upsell, Repeat, a practical guide to sales dominance. Learn how to conquer fear of selling, how to get people to buy from you, and more. This book will motivate and inspire you to unleash the sales beast inside of you. Pitch, Close, Up, Sell, Repeat by David Anderson is available at Barnes & Noble, Amazon.com or wherever fine books are sold. Hey, what's going on? It's David Anderson, the Business Bully. And as you know, Audible is the absolute truth. I don't know why so many people are reluctant to try Audible. i tell you what we'll do. If you go to audibletrial.com forward slash bully, you can get a free audiobook download on your boy. That's right. Business bully time, baby. So audibletrial.com forward slash bully, and you can pick of over 180,000 titles. Man, and they're growing. And I'm going to tell you what, Pitch Close, Upsell, Repeat will be coming this week fall man and i'm really excited on top of that sell like jesus when that drops as an audiobook it'll be available on audible but there's so many great titles there now people you respect people you love they're all there and let's just say that you're not doing business maybe you need just like a brain break you can easily get yourself some harry potter you can get the girl with the dragon tattoo you can get a great book that puts a twist on the wizard of oz called dorothy must die there's so many great titles to choose from fiction if you want to learn spanish you can do that but don't do that get lashonda fitzgerald's course if you want to do that but that's a whole nother hour show audible trial.com forward slash bully and you already know that's what we're going to do so let's get back to this show it's time for another business bully interview Yes, yes, and if you are just tuning in, like, why the hell did you fast forward through an entire half hour of this program when I'm spitting this hot ism? I don't know what's wrong with you. Uh, LaShonda Fitzgerald is with us, and uh, of course, she's super awesome, and she is uh, the owner and CEO of Ready to Fa- uh, Ready for Spanish, and she is also the launch coach. She teaches you how to launch your products, how to launch your business, get yourself out there and do amazing things. So, uh, LaShonda, when it comes down to it, what, tell me, like, the most frustrated you've ever been with a client? Um, so a lot of people just get knowledge, right? Mm-hmm. Like they take, they're, they're on it. They're on everybody's webinar. Uh-huh. They have everybody's training course. They're reading everybody's book. Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, what is it that I'm missing? Like, what is it that I'm doing wrong? <laughs> and and it it's amazing. And I'm like, you're not doing anything wrong. You just aren't doing anything. Like you haven't applied any of these teachings. Like you're not moving. You're just, I don't know. Like you're, you're scared. You're you're using this as an excuse, like not to take action. And, and really that that's it. Like at some point there's only so much knowledge that you can have. Like you have to, you have to make a move. Okay, um, so I'm going to try this a different way. Um, what, you, what I hear you saying is there's a bunch of people who are basically information, motivation, um, program, webinar junkies who never do anything. They're like the equivalent in the entrepreneurial business world of like super duper seniors, people who keep taking classes but are scared to graduate. Absol- absolutely. Oh, mm. yeah. I mean, you have to do the work. Like there's there's... 
no substitute for doing the work except paying somebody to do the work for you. Hey, but hey, the work, the hey, work has to get done. You do realize there is a segment of my entire business that is based on people buying these books and buying these products and buying these webinars. What they do with them make my concern, but don't tell people don't buy it. No, I need them to buy it. Like, no, I'm not all, telling hey, you don't buy them. But, I'm telling you to use what you buy. Like you have to take it okay, cool. to the next level and, and implement or else, and now you might not like this, but you're wasting your time. Whoa. You're wasting your time and you're wasting your money. Hey, lady. Hey. I'm sorry. Hey. I... <laughs> Look, this I'm is sorry. number one in three countries. Let me tell you something. Okay? There's some people, okay? You don't know what people go through. You don't, you don't know their psychology. What if, what, if, what if mom and them, you know, or their cousins, or they grew up in an area where nobody does what they do? Like, maybe they just don't have an, maybe they don't have an example of, of, of how to, how to, how to, actually to, to, to do it you ever think of that okay I mean, you you just do it or if you're not gonna do it then then quit acting like you're gonna do it and act like you're gonna do something else i don't know oh. but oh. <laughs> but but you you do you need to take action you need to move beyond the acquiring of knowledge and you need to to take action I that's guess, guess that's that really the point. only way that you're gonna move. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I'm just a big believer that if you're gonna keep paying me, I'm gonna continue to take your money. You know, but don't come crying to me. Well, you know, your book didn't work. Well, you know, the book is an inanimate object. It just has knowledge in it via words. You actually have to do something with it. Yeah. And um, you know, there, there's there's a lot of people who just refuse to. Um, to, to do anything with it and it, and it's a sin and a shame that it's that way but um you know it kind of is and that kind of sucks you know because there are people who will just never get it and okay we have those in society we call them bums or uh never was this you know have you ever heard my popcorn theory tell me okay so <laughs> You, I'm sure you have a microwave in your house. I've never been to your home. I used to live in Nashville. We didn't know each other when I was there. Um, you have a microwave in your house, I'm quite sure. Yes, but you know I don't believe in microwaves, but that's probably another. But that's a whole, I'm not, I'm not here for your environmental talk, Captain Planet. <laughs> Just go with the analogy. Just if yes. I ask you, get, thank yes. you, you have a microwave. Um, have you ever in your entire life, pre-boiling everything, had microwave popcorn? Yes. Okay. Have you ever noticed that when you have microwave popcorn, it's it, you have some kernels, right, that pop and they're fluffy and buttery and mm, ooh, so delicious. And then you have kernels that are just slightly burnt. And then you look at the bottom of the bag, right? Because I used to eat them out the bag. I pour them all into a bowl and I kind of, uh, you know, put a little hot sauce on them. Maybe some like, you know, um, sprinkles or whatever, like you know, the cheese stuff, whatever. Um, but if you notice, there's always in the bottom of the bag, these kernels that just never pop ever. So here's the, here's, here's the point, right? You can be in the same environment, subjected to the same conditions and you still will not pop. And that is strictly because you did not choose to pop. You didn't take advantage of, of, of that environment. You didn't take advantage of those circumstances. You didn't take advantage of those around you who were popping and, and looking at their examples. So you remain an unpopped, uneaten kernel, never reaching its full potential. And where do you wind up? The garbage. You're welcome. Give it up for my analogies. <laughs> yeah, you. I mean, that's a, you're, you're absolutely right. Like, it, it all comes down to your choice. That's how I feel. So... Let's just say that there are some people, like right now, who want to do it, but just don't know where to start, and they need some help. What if there was like a, um, I don't know, like maybe a, a, a I don't, not even a course, not another program. No, they don't need another person. They, no. they don't need no webinar. You know what they need? You know what they need, LaShonda? What do they need? They need a challenge. Hmm. They, they need some accountability. I think so. That's I, different. I, I feel like that's different. So I think we should challenge these bastards. I, I think we should just put a challenge together and make it happen. Oh, wait, we have one, don't we? <laughs> we do. And Tell it's amazing. Tell the people about the challenge. 
So we created Leap 21. Mm. It's, it's a 21-day challenge for entrepreneurs, not just any entrepreneur, mm. action takers, mm -hmm. because that's what's missing is the action. We are challenging you to transform your business in 21 days. 21 days. Three weeks. Mm -hmm. Three, six, seven. Mm -hmm. You can change your habits. You can shift your your mindset. And, and we can really let go of those things in our business that aren't working for us. Um, I'm going to show you how to implement new systems. Dave's going to show you how to, how to brand yourself, how to get clear on, on who you serve, how to attract that new market if the, the current clients aren't working for you. Um, we're going to go in and, and totally transform uh, the things that aren't working for you. I can't wait, man. I'm I'm so uh, I'm I'm so excited. I think that you know this is something that people need because you don't need another damn course. You know, no. you don't need any more motivation. Look, man, I, I'll motivate you all damn day. You know, like I, I've 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 done the Tony Robbins thing. I've, I've I've had my time with Les Brown. I've done all that. You know, the Brandon Bouchards of the world, the Gary V's of the world. That's great. You know, even the Dave Andersons of the world. That that's great. But at some point, you got to turn that motivation into actual participation. You have to actually do something. You can't be afraid to just sit on the sidelines, okay? You can't just uh, sit back and just watch the entire parade pass you by and you're not in it. You know, that's for other people. You're special. You, you have something in you that is designed to make the world a better place, to make things easier for folks. America has the dubious distinction of being the only country that has made more billionaires from taking advantage of people's laziness than any mm -hmm. other developed nation. From the escalator to the to the automobile, you know, to the elevator, to the sham wow, like that's what we do. And I'm not saying that you need to invent anything, but I am saying that you need to get off of the bench you need to take a leap you need to jump in the game you need to treat your life like it's important and that your business part of your life is important and you can actually make things happen so we are challenging you and when i say challenge look man you're going to be doing all types of challenges you're going to be doing sales challenges you're going to be doing branding challenges you're going to be forced to go out and, and talk to people about your business and we are going to hold you accountable and right. um this is going to be something that is going to revolutionize the way that people look at themselves and look at themselves in business. It's not going to matter that your mom was a single mom and, you know, she had three crack babies after you. Or it doesn't matter if your daddy wasn't there or he was there and then he went off for a pack of cigarettes and never came back. It doesn't matter that your brother used to give you Dutch ovens while you slept. None of that matters. We're dealing with the here and now, and we're going to make you responsible for you. And that you that you want to be, we're going to pull it out of you. We're going to challenge, and we're going to poke you and prod you and motivate and inspire you to get there. So I'm fired up. I'm ready to go. Um, let's try to let them know where they can go to, to sign up for this thing and what they get. Like, build a value. Show them how you build a value. Yeah, so I'm, I'm so excited. And even while this is so different, because, yes, you will have a – a challenge every single day that's going to transform your business. But we're not going to say, hey, go pitch your business. We're going to show you step by step how to do that. So I believe that people don't take action because they don't know what to do or where to start. So what people need are are concrete steps. Like they really do need handholding um, step by step. So it's, you know, step one, you do this. Step two, step three, step four. Like there's there's a blueprint and you you literally just check it off. So there is no, you know, I didn't know what to do. And then we are going to hold you accountable. So every single day you'll be, you know, gaining new skills, uh, learning new tips and strategies, systems that can enhance and grow your business. So I'm, I'm so excited for this challenge, um, you can go to LeeShondaFitzgerald.com slash Leap21 to sign up for the challenge. Spell that for the people because you know they probably think your name is L-A-E-S-E-A-N. Tell them how to spell it. It is L-E-S-H-A 
W N D A F I T Z G E R A L D dot com slash leap twenty one. We gotta shout out my mama because she she gave me the name. I love it. Leshonda Fitzgerald dot com slash leap twenty one. Shout out to your mama for doing what she was supposed to do. You wasn't supposed to just be nameless. Mm-mm. But, you know, we're going to give mama some shine <laughs> since mama's important right now. Everybody love their mama. Like, you, you really ain't selling this thing. Look at she talking about her dad going, mama, we trying to get people to do this dad going. LeeShondaFitzgerald.com slash Lee21. So what you're going to get each day during the challenge, you're going to get a strategy, a tip from Dave and I, and you'll also get an an opportunity to ask us questions. So you'll be challenged. There's, you know, pitch challenges. There's marketing challenges. There's, you know, find your ideal client. We want you to get clear. um, And we want you to get results. So every morning we'll come on live with the challenge. We'll give you step-by-step instructions on how to complete that challenge for the day. In the evening, we have industry experts that are going to come on and give you a bonus challenge for you to implement. So this is all about implementation. This is taking that knowledge that you are acquiring to the next level to get solutions. So it, it's knowledge and it's action. Um, just the consistency alone is enough to, to transform your business. Yep. Consistency. Let me tell you something. Consistency is what that is. So, um, I wanted to make sure that you had something that was going to be phenomenal. And, you know, I just, I wasn't interested in doing another course. LaShonda wasn't interested in doing just another course. We wanted to do something that was going to literally revolutionize the way that people um, got out of their heads and got out of their feelings and, and got into their business. You hear me say that all the time, but it's the truth. Once you put your feelings aside and what you feel someone's going to do and what you feel someone knows and you get down to what you're capable of doing with those two hands, that mouth, and that brain. You will transform the life of your business, the lives of your loved ones, and your life. So that's what we're here for, you know, and I wanted people to get to know you in my audience who hadn't had a chance to get to know you, Lishonda, um, because it's important that people see, you know, that, it can be done. If you have a little determination and the right amount of motivation, anything can be done. Do you know what's funny? Somebody asked me the other day, said, um, Mr. Anderson, how do you how do you keep going when you know when when you know things don't work out or what do you do um, in order to like do so much? And I literally said, Damn, I, I never thought of that. And and what it is is I don't believe in options. I don't believe in plan B. There is one plan, and I'm going to make it happen. And I don't care how I do it. I don't know how I'm going to do it. How ain't my business. I'm not in the how business. I'm in the do it business. I'm in the do it business. Literally today I closed probably a good four or five grand worth of business in 30 minutes. And and I wasn't even trying. I just did. I didn't know what I was going to say. I didn't know what I was going to do. I see people because I, I, I like you know, I train salespeople and I'm watching, you know, a sales staff and they're like, well, I can't believe you said that to this person, Mr. Anderson. And I can't believe you said this to that person. And, and, and they stayed on the phone and I'm like, they stayed on the phone because they respect the fact that I'm genuine and I'm not going to lie to you. We, we got to stop being so scared and, and so rigid and so scripted that we don't leave any room for error. If you saw your soulmate, and they were about to hop on a bus and you knew for a fact that it was more than likely that you'd never see that person again, wouldn't you run after that bus, get on that bus no matter where it was going and just say, hey, my name is such and such, I'd like to get to know you? You know, you don't necessarily need a script to say that. You know, you should know your product. You should know what it is that makes you great. You should know those things. And when you know those things, then you can move and maneuver around, you know, um, 
there was a uh, it was an interview with Andre 3000 and someone was asking him about his acting career and he said you know I like to act he said but I feel like the most important thing for me was learning my lines and the interviewer said well that's really basic and he said no no it's the most important thing and he said well why do you feel learning your lines is so important anybody can learn lines he said but once I learn the lines then I can play with them then I can focus on developing my character then I can fill in all those little things and the touches and the ticks and, you know, how I blink and who was my best friend in third grade. We don't do that. We already know what our products are. We already know who we are. And if we don't, we're going to help you learn those things. But deep down inside, you know, you just need us to, to, to help you see it for yourself. And once you do that, then you'll be able to be less rigid. You won't be afraid to ask for the sale. You won't be ashamed to be bold. You know, being humble is nice if you're a little kid and you win the third grade spelling bee, but it does not make a mogul. I'm so sorry. And we're here for people who want to be moguls. We're here for people who want to be um, on that next level. So, um, yeah, LeShondaFitzgerald.com forward slash Leap21. Um, LeShonda, did I miss anything? Um, You know, we really are very different. So, mm-hmm. like, they're they're right. kidding the best of 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 both worlds so like i implement systems like that's what i do like award winning systems like we want our businesses on on autopilot we want you know systems and strategies A a lot of people if if they do have a system for their business it's just not working for them right and 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 you're a little different that's one way to put it you're trying to be nice but that's okay (laughs) <laughs> no, it's not it's not that you don't have systems. Like you you have systems that work for you and you know very well what they are. But I think the the balance between the business bully and the launch coach is is just something that that's never been seen before. No. You you need you need chaos and structure. You need devil may care and you also need, you know, balance you need um someone who can build the helicopter and you need somebody who can throw you off the cliff and help you build the wings on the way down you need Mm -hmm. all of that because you have to find what works for you and there's certain things about me that will work for you and certain things that won't there's certain things about lishonda that will work for you and there's certain things that won't but when you put all of those things together and you have that combination you're going to find that you're going to get something out of yourself that has nothing to do with me or Lishonda and has everything to do with you and what you're truly capable of. We're going to help you meet that person who has been itching in the core of your soul to get out and, and put your gift, put your talents, put your business out for people to consume in mass. Yes, we're going to show you how to build that list. I'm going to show you how to make them talk. She's going to show you how to build that funnel. Do you see how that works? Look, man, you have to have somebody who's going to executive produce the show, but you also have to have the show. So you're getting the show and the producer. So, um, yeah. Fire. I'm I'm amped. You want some of this hot fire? (laughs) <laughs> he wants some of this. Man, I'm going to tell you something. We're making thunder and lightning out here. Mm. Boy, it's going to start raining money on your head. It's going to rain on your head. <laughs> Man, I, I, I'm so excited. Um, now, I do know that this thing launches July 1st. July 1st is, July. The, is the challenge day. We, we actually have pre-launch. Uh, activities going on now because we do want to make sure everybody's on the same playing field when they start. Yeah, it is important. So you want to get in, you want to get in now. Um, Space is limited. Yeah. So if you're one of those people who want to wait around to the last minute, it's not guaranteed that you're going to get in there. Sure enough, we're not just taking everybody. Uh Uh-uh. No, no, no. No, no, no. So y'all might want to make that happen. I'm just saying. (laughs) So, anything else you want to tell the people before I close this thing on out here? No, I mean, sign up today. Check us out, Leap21, LeeShondaFitzGerald.com, slash Leap21. You don't want to miss it. Yeah, buddy. 
So that's it. I, I hope you guys have enjoyed the show. You know, I'm going to see you next time. Um, so definitely, uh, you know, be good. And as always, man, get out of your feelings and into your business. We'll see you next time. Follow us on Twitter at My Inner Brand. Thanks for listening to the Business Bully Podcast. We'll talk to you next time.